So today we are going to continue from where we stopped on Machine Learning 101. So we continue from Lesson 7 and this is going to be Lesson 7a. We are still talking about underfitting and overfitting. And that derived from the fact that if you have a data set made up of independent and dependent variable, we are trying to find out a function that relates these two variables. And we assume that that function might be a polynomial function or a linear function. Now you've chosen this function to be a polynomial. If you choose it to be a polynomial, it means that you need to choose the order of this polynomial. Will it be order of one or two or three or four? And the more you increase the order of this polynomial, the more complex this model becomes. And the more complex this model becomes, the more flexible it becomes too. The reason is because if it's a polynomial, it means you can simply reduce the order as well and it becomes a linear function. So let's go back to our notes. I also want to remind you to subscribe. If you've not subscribed, click on the subscribe button below so that you can follow along in this class and also you get updates when a new lesson is made. So let's go to the screen, uh, to the page, and then we see what happens. So now we are going to use Python to demonstrate exactly what is happening here. So let's look at first what underfitting is. Underfitting happens when M is very low. Remember, remember that we mentioned that this polynomial we choose or this function we choose may not give us the exact relationship between these two variables. The difference between our calculated y value and the real y value in the training set is the error. Combination of, of this error is what we want to reduce. We want to reduce the error or the difference, the variance between the actual value and the calculated value using our model, right? So this difference is represented as, as uh, EMS, that is uh, mean squared MSE, mean squared error. So there is a formula for this error that we are going to talk about. If you look at the screen, you have bias variance trade-off. That's another class up to lesson 12. Bias variance trade-off actually gives more details and gives a formula as well as uh, uh, a few more details. But now we are talking about overfitting and underfitting. So we are saying when M is low, it leads to underfitting. It means that your model or your, your regression line will not be able to capture the data. However, when M is very high, we have overfitting. In this case, although you have your model complexity is high, your, 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 your model, the polynomial you choose, is able to capture a whole lot of data points but we call it overfitting because it fits closely, so closely, the training data set so that when a new data set comes, it's not able to model this new data set. And that is what we call overfitting. So you take some time to go through it. Uh, everything is really very clear. And we are going to do it in Python. We are going to now write a Python uh, uh, script to plot this function. I've created a dummy data set here that we are going to use. We are going to plot this scatter plot and then fit a polynomial regression line through this plot. And then we are going to vary the order of this polynomial, changing m from 0 all the way to maybe 13, and see how it affects this, uh, the curve fitting through the data set. And then we understand what uh, underfitting and overfitting is. Now, when it comes to trade-off, we need to find a trade-off point because at a point when the, 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 the model becomes is too low, you have underfitting, it's too high, you have overfitting, then there is a trade-off point in between. And that trade-off is called bias variance trade-off, which is discussed extensively in a later lesson. So let's go to write the Python scripts to actually perform, over, uh, to see how overfitting and underfitting works. I'm going to see if I can increase this. Okay, so... <clears throat> Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to open Jupyter Notebook and then we actually start uh, fitting this regression line. Now, this Excel file, I called it cov.xls. So I saved it uh, inside a folder in my system as cov. So we are going to actually import this data as Excel into Jupyter Notebook. Instead of copying it and pasting it, we are simply going to import it and then use this data in Jupyter Notebook, all right? So now Jupyter Notebook opens and I'm going to simply close this Excel sheet. Um, no, not this. Let's see. 
So this PowerPoint, uh, let me see. Okay, so this is what I wanted to use. Fine. So this is Jupyter Notebook. So simply go ahead to click on New and choose Python 3. I'm going to pick out, okay, fine, Python 3. And then it opens a new Jupyter Notebook. <coughs> So this notebook, I'm going to simply call it, <coughs> click on Untitled and, and give it a name. I'm going to call it Underfitting and Overfitting. Okay. So let me see. All the procedure is here. So if you miss out something, you have this code here. You can use it. So let me see. I try to increase the size of this, but it is actually not working. Okay, so doesn't increase the size of the text. So when I type it out here, you'll actually see all the codes. So the first thing we want to do is to import all the models we need. The first model I'm going to import is NumPy. Import NumPy as 10p. See if I can increase the size of this notebook. Perfect. So import NumPy as np. And we want to import matplotlib as uh, the pyplot as plt. Matplotlib, in case you don't know, is used for plotting. From sklang dot linear model import <coughs> linear regression. From sklang dot free processing imports polynomial polynomial features. So I like to run everything each time so it runs perfectly. Mm -hmm. So the next thing I'm going to do is to import the data set from Excel into Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to simply create a data frame, call it DF, is equal to PD. PD stands for pandas, and it seems I forgot to import it, so I'm going to just import it, import pandas as PD. So pandas is used to manage data, to work with data, to import data from different data, set, uh, from different, uh, data formats pd.read excel and specify the location of the excel file. So in this case is C uh, ML101 slash call.xlsx. So this is the location of the file. So if I run it, I hope it's going to import. So it says and the flying found, so I need to enclose in one more code. So I'm going to run again. So everything, uh, okay. So I'm going to run it because after I imported pandas, I did not execute the import statement. So at this point, it's fine. So if you want to view the data frame or the data we imported, you simply type pd and run, and you can see the data set. Okay, so let me take it out. <coughs> So the next thing I want to do at this point, I uh, want to shift this thing up. I don't know why this is always uh, taking. Okay, so let's just continue. <coughs> so I'm going to say x is equal to, so I'm going to create the x and y data sets and separate them into two parts. df x the values so this actually takes the x column in the data in the data frame and places it into a variable or an array x so i'm going to say y is equal to df y the values so in case you want to know what is happening i may uh, open this excel file so that you see what exactly is in there so when we refer to x dot values, it takes this x. So it takes the column header of each of the of the of the of the data uh, data columns. Mm -hmm. So 
So the next thing I want to do is to do what is called uh, pre-processing. And pre-processing simply, sim simply means that you simply reshape the x value. So you see x dot reshape goes from minus 1. Pre-processing is what you do to make the analysis a bit easier. So I'm going to run and everything is fine. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do at this point is to now create a polynomial model variable. I call it poly. So that is the model I'm going to create. So polynomial features. And at this time, degree refers to degree refers to the order of this polynomial. So if I choose degree is equal to one, and it's going to be uh, just a linear function. So we are going to start off with degree is equal to 1 and I, again I'm going to create another variable called x poly. So I'm going to fit the x data sets, fit this polynomial using the x uh, data set. So poly fit, poly dot fit, transform And I'm going to pass x in there. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is to is to do a command poly dot fix x poly and y. So this last line, this fits I'm calling at this point. We are actually fitting now a polynomial regression line through the data set. So if I run everything, and hopefully everything is fine. All right. So at this point, I'd like to shift this to this place. And I'd like to, I don't know why. OK, let's, let's just continue. Let's just continue. So the next line says, Lin reg is equal to linear regression, so we create a linear regression object. Linear lin reg is equal to linear regression. So, so this is some kind of confusing way Python does things. So, it's using a linear regression fit and a, as well as a polynomial regression at the same time. So, lin reg dot fit uh, x poly. And why? Mm -hmm. So, so don't worry about all this. We are trying to see what is going to happen to the curve when we are changing the uh, the the values of m, which is the other of the polynomial. So, all of this maybe you just make our time to understand uh, to run it a few times, and it's going to be clear to you. So, the next thing I'm going to do is is to predict new y values. So, I'm going to say y pred is equal to. Uh, Lean reg, lean reg dot, uh, dot predict. So this time I'm predicting for new y values and I'm going to use x poly. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to as well run each one, I'm going to run it. And then finally, I'm going to do a scatter plot. Uh, I'm going to do a scatter plot of x and y, the original data set. And color is equal to blue. This is a scatter plot of the original data set. So if I run it at this time, it says, okay, we have PLT, it's actually PLT dot plot. So this is the original data set plotted in uh, Original data set, I actually should use scatter, not plot. So we just need it. So we need to use scatter. I'm going to run it. All right, so this is a scatter plot of our data set. So this data set that we imported from Excel, this is a plot. So we need to fit a, a regression line, try to fit a polynomial regression line through this data set. All right, so to do that, what I'm going to do is so 
now use a plot statement to plot a line now using the predicted values of y so plt.plot and I'm going to use x and this time I'm going to use y pred and this time the color is going to be equal to red okay so plt.show mm -hmm. so let's run it and see okay fine so at this point I'm going to move this to this place Maybe I'll just leave this open and maybe later I'll try to explain it. So let's skip this here so that we we'll walk from here. Okay, so this is what we have. In this case, we have degree of 1, as you can see, degree of 1 in this place here. Now, at this point, this line we have, which is we have a model of degree 1, model of order of 1, does not fit this data in any way. So it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't capture this data. So this is a problem of underfitting that is happening here because the value of m, the order of the polynomial, is too low. Let's increase to 3 and see if we have something. So 3. My keyboard is stopping to work. Why? Okay, so m is equal to 3. So this time I'm going to just run all. So at m is equal to 3, it tries to adjust to try to fit the data. At this time you can see it's going downwards to fit this three data set, uh, three data points here. But it's still a problem of underfitting because it doesn't really make any sense out of the data. This time we are going to increase to 5 and I'm going to run everything as well. As you can see, we have a good polynomial, although it's not a smooth curve, but it tends to understand the data because this original data was actually a trigonometric uh, curve that actually goes, uh, passes through the x and uh, x axis several times. So we have something fairly good. It doesn't touch all the data sets or data points, but it's fairly good. Now let's overshoot and go to all the way to 10, and I'm going to run everything. So we have something that is trying to fit everything, and so we are now moving into kind of overfitting a uh, situation because it's trying to touch every line. Now I'm going to change the value of m to 13 and I'm going to run everything as well. Right, so, so now I have 13, so it, it fits all the data points. And this is a typical problem of overfitting because this model we created matches this, data, this training data set exactly, perfectly. Meaning that at this point, when a new data point comes in, it will not be able to predict it accurately. So this is a problem uh, we've uh, been able to model. Now you understand what overfitting and underfitting is. If you make your polynomial model too complex, it will fit the data, it becomes flexible, but we have a problem of overfitting because it will not be able to handle new data points because it matches the training data set so closely. However, if the model is too uh, rigid or too, too simple, that is m value for the order of the polynomial is too low, they have a situation whereby the, the model does not understand the data and that is a problem of underfitting as you can see here. So I hope you understand this now and you can explain the problem of over overfitting and un underfitting. I would like to thank you for viewing, I would like to stop here. In the next class, maybe we will not talk about bias variance trade-off, we'll talk about it a little later, but in the next class, maybe we'll start talking about probabilities um, in, in machine learning. So remember to subscribe. Okay, also leave me a comment if this has been informative for you, or there are some observations you've made, leave a comment for me below. And feel free to share this in among your friends on your social network profile. Maybe it's going to help somebody who is trying to learn either machine learning or data science. I remain kind on the tech pro.